time for some more Planescape Torment. Well, now we're back here. Maybe now we can go back down. Done. Yes. Awesome. What's lying around here? I'm gone. Cleaning rags, bandages. Or maybe this is the embalming room? A zombie worker. This especially ghastly looking female corpse is missing its ears, nose and lips. Oh. In order to sew her jaw closed, whoever prepared her had to draw the skin especially tight around her mouth. You can still see a line of crooked yellow teeth through the opening slit that remains. The number 891. 891 has been carved into the flesh of her brow. Oh god. That's awful. Done. Maybe now we can go further down. I would really appreciate it. Yes, we can! Great success. Great success. This stuttering corpse has had its eyes soon shut as well as its mouth and the number 732 is carved into its brow. The thread that keeps its ocular cavity sealed looks extremely old. You wonder if the eyes were soon shut before or after the man's death. You notice he is carrying a huge tome in his hands, as if taking it somewhere. Alright. Take the tome from his hands, carefully. You carefully take the tome from the corpse's hands. It doesn't seem to notice. The tome appears to be a book of enchantments and wards. It is filled with diagrams and charts detailing various aspects of the necromantic arts. The book itself is extremely heavy. As awkward as the zombie is, it must be extremely strong. Hmm. This worn, leather-bound tome lists diagrams and charts detailing several minor wards and enchantments. There are numerous drawings of skeletons, bones and the manner by which they may be preserved over time. Of particular interest is the section regarding guardians. Apparently the dustmen animate corpses of fallen giants to serve as guardians for the mortuary. To make them even deadlier, Armoring enchantments are woven into their breastplates to help shield them from attacks. The book is much too complex for you to absorb all at once, but it looks as if you could refer to certain section when the need arises. Hmm, very handy. Done. Done. You see a male corpse with the number 331 chiseled into his skull. His eyes and lips are stitched closed and there is a gaping hole torn in his throat. He smells foul. I'm gone. I will leave him alone. I'm gone. Done. No. Done. I don't want to talk to you. Get over there. 
Get over there. All right. I'm gone. All right. This stuttering corpse had has had its uh, so. Oh, all right, all right, all right. That's the one with the book. All right. I'm gone. Well, we have his book now. Obviously. These metallic blue tapestries are made of thin chain links. Interesting. Done. All right. Oh my. All, all right. Man. Ah, he's seen us. I'm gone. Well, I guess we'll have to talk to them again. Although I don't like... I'm him. gone. See a stern looking man in black robes. He's glaring at you suspiciously. You state your business. I seem to be lost. You do indeed look lost. The dust man's eyes narrow to slits and his hands falls to the dagger by his sides. Wait here while I summon the other guards to direct you out. He looks as if he's about to call out. Run for it. Uh. There you go. Now everyone hates me. And our inventory is obviously full. Done. I'm gone. Okay, I promise I won't uh, abuse sta safe states too much in this let's play, but... Alright. I don't want to kill them all. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. We've come so far I'm gone. killing all of them. Seems to be a shame. This corpse looked like it was frozen. It appears to be dead, but you can't be sure. 
the magic contained within the charm is activated when the insect is consumed. Mmm. When swallowed, the recipient suddenly becomes extremely nauseous. A few seconds later, the charmed individual expels a stream of insects from the nose and mouth. Provided the charmed individual can keep their wits about them after the casting, the caster can send this cloud to attack a target. No, no. Cloud charm. It heals hit points. This glistening blood drop is as hard and smooth as a pearl. When placed on the tongue, it dissolves instantly and spreads through the character, character's bloodstream. The charm stimulates the user's blood into clotting and scabbing over existing wounds, healing any minor damage the user may have suffered before consuming the charm. Furthermore, as long as the charm is in effect, the player's blood becomes more aware of new wounds that occur, especially any attacks that draw blood. The charmed individual becomes more resistant to slashing and piercing attacks as their blood clots and scabs over the wound as soon as the flesh is torn. Interesting. Oh, there is a... What was that? Is that a giant All right. skeleton? Well... All right. Done. We need to conceal ourselves. I'm gone. So maybe if we kill the named character... I'm not sure if we can... Snap the neck of a guard. I'm gone. Guards are supposed to be. Yeah, I don't. I'm know gone. The guard or something. All right. I'm gone. Done. <sighs> don't arouse a suspicion. There is the. All right. We will need another key. Done. Talk to him. I see a tired looking man in a black robe. Yeah, he's tired. His narrow face is extremely pale and it doesn't look as if he has been sleeping. His shoulders are slumped and the flesh sacks loosely beneath his bloodshot eyes. He looks so lost in thoughts he doesn't even notice you. Updated my journal. Greetings. Greetings. The man turns to face you and makes a slight bow. You suddenly notice that his eyes aren't bloodshot so much as they have a red tinge to them. I'm Soego. How may I... He suddenly seems to notice your scars and the corner of his mouth twitches. I'm sorry, Sira. Are you lost? No, I'm not lost. I had some questions. I do not recall admitting you. Suego so looks at you suspiciously and his eyes gleam red in the light of the torches. May I ask what you're doing here? We'll try to lean in as if to whisper to him. Then when he leans in, snap his neck. Suego frowns as you lean in and you notice he sniffs the air as if testing it. His eyes suddenly narrow and he looks like he is about to call for the guards. Snap his neck before he can call out! As you lunge for him, Suego leaps back, his eyes gleaming red and his teeth bad. With a hiss, he claps his hands together sharply three times. Ah! Ah! Ah. All right. All right. Why can't I just kill one of them? And too bad, really. I'm gone. All right. Well, I think All we right. need a. All right. Done. Dustman attire. 
What's up? Oh, I want to talk. Hey, what? what's eating you, Chief? Sure, why not? All right. I'm gone. No, go away, go Done. away. I, I don't even want to talk to you. Go away. I'm gone. Yeah. See? I really need one of their robes. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, we have seen her already. Can we talk to her? You see a strikingly beautiful ghostly form before you. Her arms are crossed and her eyes are closed. She has long flowing hair and her gown seems stirred by some ethereal breeze. As you watch, she stirs slightly and her eyes flicker. You! What is it that brings you here? Have you come to see firsthand the misery you have wrought? Perhaps in death I still hold some shred of use for you. My love. Who are you? The spirit makes a begging motion with her hands. How can it be that the thieves of the mind continue to steal my name from your memory? Do you not remember me, my love? The ghost stretches out her arms. Think! Her voice becomes desperate again. The name Dionara must evoke some memory within you. No, I'm... Uh, well, we could lie here, but... I don't want to lie. No, I'm sorry, my memories are lost to me. Then it is as I feared. I am truly lost to you. And what was once an inconvenience for you, you now have to excuse to discard me as you have my memory. Inconvenience? Discard you? I do not know your spirit. My memories are no more. Tell me, who are you? What do you know of me? You are one you, you are one both blessed and cursed, my love. And you are one who is never far from my thoughts and heart. Blessed and cursed? What do you mean? The nature of your curse should be apparent, my love. Look at you. She points at you. Death rejects you. Your memories have abandoned you. Do you not pause and wonder why? I'm still trying to get my bearings actually. What else can you tell me about myself? I know that you once claimed you loved me and that you would love me until death claimed us both. I believe that, never knowing the truth of who you were, what you were. 
And what am I? You... I... Cannot... She suddenly freezes and she speaks slowly, carefully, as if her voice frightens her. The truth is this. You are one who dies many deaths. These deaths have given the knowing of all things mortal, and in your hand lies the spark of life and death. Those that die near you carry a trace of themselves that you can bring forth. As Dianara speaks the words, a crawling sensation wells up in the back of your skull and suddenly and you suddenly feel compelled to look at your hand. As you lift it up and look at it, you can see the blood cursing sluggishly through your arm, pouring into your muscles and in turn giving strength to your bones. Updated my journal. Whoa. And you know Dianara is right. You suddenly remember how to coax the dimmest spark of life from a body and bring it forth. The thought both horrifies you and intrigues you. You have remembered how to raise others from the dead. To access this ability select the special abilities button in the quick menu. You can only use this on party members that have died in your presence. It will not work on anyone who does not travel with you and it will not work on party members you remove from the party while they are dead. I... I... I had other questions. Who are you? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have other questions. Can you tell me where I am? Where are you? Why, you are here with me, my love, as in the times when life was something both, both of us shared. Now it is the internal boundary that separates us. Eternal boundary? Dianero sounds saddened. It is a barrier I fear you shall never cross, my love. It is the barrier between your life and what remains of mine. I see. Perhaps you could answer some more questions. I need to escape this place. Can you help me? As you are about to ask that narrow the question, it catches in your throat. It occurs to you that if you tell her you are looking for an escape route, she may feel you are abandoning her. If you are going to ask her how to leave, you will need to be delicate about it. Dianara, I am in danger. Can you guide me to a place of safety? I shall return as soon as I can speak to you again. In danger? Dianara looks concerned. Of course, my love. I will aid you in any way I can. She closes her eyes for a moment and you watch an ethereal zephyr pass through her body, steering her hair. After a moment the zephyr dies and her eyes slowly open. Perhaps there is a way. I sense that this place holds many doors shrouded from mortal eyes. Perhaps you could use one of these portals as a means of escape. Portals? Portals are holes in existence leading to destinations in the inner and outer planes. If you could find the proper key, you could escape through one of them. Key? Then I pauses for a moment as if attempting to remember. Portals will, will reveal themselves when you have the proper key. Unfortunately, these keys can be almost anything. An emotion, a piece of wood, a dagger of silvered glass, a scrap of cloth, a tune you hum to yourself. I fear that the dustmen are the only ones who would know the keys you could use to leave the halls, my love. Then I shall ask one of them. Farewell, Dianara. Hold a moment. I learned much when I traveled with you, my love, and what you have lost I have retained. 
I have not divulged all that I know to you. My sight is clear, whilst you fumble in the darkness for a spark of thought. And what is it your sight sees that I do not? I s do not? Time itself relaxes its hold as the chill of oblivion slowly claims us, my love. Glimpses of things yet to come swarm across my vision. I see you, my love. I see you as you are now and... Danara grows quiet. What is it? What is it that you see? I see what lies ahead for you. It ripples through the plains, stemming outward from this point. Shall I speak of what I see? Hmm. Well, I'm curious. Tell me. First, I require a promise. Promise you will return. That you will find some means to save me or join me. I feel that this is that this is a pretty important decision. Well, I'm not really... Is the, is the knowledge about the future really that important to me? I'm not sure because... Well... Already knowing what the future will be makes it less worthwhile to actually see what the future is, I guess, so... The price of such a promise is too high. Darnara folds her arms. Indeed it is, my love. The price of immortality was obli obviously not too high, however. Is integrity too much for one of your means? I find it hard to believe that a woman I once... <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a good answer. I find it hard to believe that a woman I once loved would blackmail promises from me with the promise of revelations. Have you no faith in me, Dionara? Dionara looks taken aback. Then her tone changes, her voice becoming almost pleading. I do not mean to extract a vow from you, my love. It is just that I have waited so long for you to join me beyond the... If you do not mean to extract a vow from me, Dara, then do not do so. Now tell your vision and we will speak no more of vows and promises. Danara stiffens. She looks as if she is about to say something, then sighs in defeat. Very well, my love. As before, I shall have to place my trust in you. She closes her eyes. This is what my eyes see, my love. Unfettered by the shackles of time. You shall meet enemies three, but none more dangerous than yourself in your full glory. They are shades of evil, of good, and of neutrality. 
given life and twisted by the laws of the plains. You shall come to a prison built of regrets and sorrow, where the shadows themselves have gone mad. There you will be asked to make a terrible sacrifice, my love. For the matter to be laid to rest, you must destroy that which keeps you alive and be immortal no longer. I know that you must die while you still can. The circle must come to a close, my love. You were not meant for this life. You must find that which was taken from you and travel beyond into the lands of the dead. Die while I still Updated can. Updated my journal. I, not I do not doubt your ability to rise from the dead. I do believe that every incarnation weakens your thoughts and memories. You claim you have lost your memory. Perhaps it is a side effect of countless deaths? If so, what more will you lose in successive deaths? If you lose your mind, you will not even know enough to realize that you cannot die. You shall truly be doomed. Countless deaths? How long has this been going on? I do not truly know, except that it has gone on long enough. Okay. I shall wait for you in death's halls, my love. She smiles, but there is only sadness in it. She closes her eyes and with an ethereal whisper she fades. What, are you back with me, chief? You kind of drifted out on me there. No, I'm fine. Do you know who that spirit was? A uh, spirit? That spectre I was talking to the woman. You were rot we, you were rattling your bone box with some woman? Where? Martha sounds excited. What did she look like? She was right on top of the beer. Didn't you see her? Uh, no. You just kind of drifted out of, out for a bit there. Just stood there, statue-like. I was a little worried you'd gone addled on me again. No, I'm fine, I think. Let's move on. Whoa. Pretty deep stuff. How long have we been dying and coming back from the dead? I'm gone. Well. All right. I'll be back in a minute. 